We've helped quite a range of schools um, with, um, with the likes of Square and other suppliers of, um, of equipment along their digital learning uh, journey. And when we set out um, our sort of business planning process some time ago last year, we put a blueprint together. And that blueprint was geared around how all schools should behave. And what we very, very, very quickly realised is every school in the UK is different. So even though we think we've, um, we've got a scheme that we can run out here, um, schools have different ideas and thoughts how to actually implement digital one-to-one -one learning. But there are some basic rules. And what I'd like to do is just explain some of the things that we've seen in the past and just talk through some of these, uh, these basic rules. One of the, uh, the key things, and I think some of this has already been discussed earlier today, but one of the most important things a school has got to do is actually get a champion. It's irrelevant whether it's the ICT manager, the bursar, the, the deputy head in this case, or whoever, but a school needs to have a champion, somebody that is going to lead the school through um, this, this process. And one of their first jobs is to put a, school, uh, put a team together. And again, this team, it doesn't have to be made up of those school teachers, people that actually understand education, um, understand digital learning. It's actually good, if anything, to put members of the team together that are a bit sceptical or they don't really understand um, you know, computers or, or the likes of iPads, etc. But it's very important that you get a, the school gets the team together. The next key thing, and I think this has been a big, big theme of today, is the digital leaders. Um, we fully agree with the sort of the process here of getting the school children involved very, very early on who can actually move things forward and actually start to embrace what the school's looking to do. Uh, fourthly, parents. Um, We've seen quite a lot of schemes roll out and there's a, a direct correlation between successful deployment of one-to-one -one technology and unsuccessful deployment. And one of the most important things that sc schools have got to do is get parental involvement from a very, very, very early on uh, stage. And again, the same ideas apply here. Don't just go for parents that really, really like the idea and want to roll this out. Try and choose some parents that are sceptical because they're the parents often that you've got to win round some time. Um, I'm going to speak in a few minutes about uh, a donation management system and support that we actually do, and I think that will roll through in the, the next couple of minutes. But it all starts with the device. And here we talked about iPads. There are numerous other different devices that you can look at. But what we find is that a lot of schools, they will actually look at different devices, not just the iPad. The reality is the iPad at the moment has probably about 99% of the UK market. So after you've looked at the device, the key thing then is to start looking at the supplier. Now there are lots of different suppliers of, of iPads or other digital devices out there, but it's really important you actually speak to a, uh, uh, to a supplier who understands the education sector. So for example, we know that you can pop up the road to John Lewis or you can go to Argos or a whole range of other companies to buy iPads. But if you do not work with a company like Square, for example, that understand what they're talking about, you'll start having a few problems. The key, um, the key things there, once you've chosen the supplier, once you've chosen the device, there's, a couple of, there's, there's four key areas that people need to look at. Uh, again, maybe touching over what other people have said is about the Wi-Fi. What we're seeing is where a school might have great access to Wi-Fi in a classroom, but will that access be okay for 30 students or pupils using the iPad at the same time? The same thing for security. One of the biggest things, that, the biggest questions we get asked or one of the biggest subjects we've got to talk about is the security. And that's the best question normally, not just from the school teachers, but it's from the parents. You know, is my child going to be safe using that iPad and can we stop them getting onto uh, things they shouldn't do? I'm not going to touch on apps because I think we've, we've done that to death today, but we know that there's lots of different apps out there. But in addition to that, you're going to have the ICT managers that are going to want to get involved in the network. And the question is, is it appropriate or not appropriate, as the case may be, for the, um, for the iPads to you know, be connected up to the school network? <coughs> in the last month, we have spoken to two separate schools. One that installed has got 12 iPads and one that bought 30 iPads. And these iPads are presently sitting in a box in a lock cupboard in the school and they do not know what to do with them and it's quite imaginable just talking about this here because why on earth would a school buy a set of buy boxes of iPads and spend all this money if they haven't actually got a facility or got the, um, the strategy to implement it 
So one of the most important things that you do need to do from a very, very early stage is, is get people in who understand what they're talking about. And the next thing is, is again, as Peter, maybe I'm touching on what he mentioned earlier, again, you must, must, must get people properly trained, on, get the, the teachers properly trained on how to actually use them. Uh, moving on to a couple of other things, um, insurance is a big, big, important sector. Uh, every school has an insurance policy. But the first thing that you should be looking at is what is the excess on the insurance policy. If the school has a £500 excess and you continuously put through claims on iPads, very quickly you'll find that you start losing a lot of money. The other thing is with the, a lot of the iPads that we're seeing being deployed out there, they are not just a school device, they're a family device as well. So these iPads go travelling to and from home, they also go abroad. So if you use a school, in po school insurance policy, you need to start asking the question, um, does that insurance policy cover the, the loss or the theft if it's gone abroad? And lastly, we've got warranty. Um, Apple, on their, with their iPads, have a one-year warranty. They also have a, what's called Apple Care, which is not sold by us, but by the likes of Square. So you can extend the warranty. And again, it's something you need to put in the mix when you're actually looking at what to do here. Moving on, I think one of the big questions that people ask is how actually do we pay for it? Uh, our roots as a, as a company go back many, many, many years. We've done numerous deals, hundreds of deals in the, in the school marketplace um, where we've actually done leasing and finance. And there are specific rules for, for, for state schools as to how you can do this. And so, for example, you have to do what's called an operating lease, which is something we, we can actually do. So how you fund this is actually quite important. And the next thing as well is we've got here parental donations. Now, if you go online, there's quite a bit of information on parental donations, and it's actually, there's mixed opinion on it. Some people think it's a dirty word. Some, some school teachers or, or headmasters do not like the idea of going to parents and asking them to help donate and help fund this. So parental donations may or may not be appropriate depending on your own set of circumstances. But what we are seeing and what we, are, we will witness over the next few years is parental donation schemes you know, will start, I think, start taking off and they'll start being a lot more of them out there. Okay, so there's quite a number of different things you actually need to, to, to think about here. But to keep the, wheels, um, keep the wheels of your journey rolling, you need to take all this into account when you're actually looking to put a, putting a, a scheme in place. Okay, we're going to take a quick look at um, parental donation systems. Um, there's lots of different ways that a school can implement a, a, a parental donation system. With John Hamden, they kept it fairly simple, which is just having a fixed donation. So they said to the parents, you've got two choices. You can go for the iPad 2, or you can go for the iPad 4th generation. And then what they said is, it's a fixed amount of money per month over a fixed period of time, which is two years. And at the end of the two years, the offer is that the parents can keep the, the, the device for a sum of £25 plus VAT. Other schools decide to subsidise this. So, for example, we did a school in uh, Nottingham, and um, to keep the numbers simple, say that you have a £400 iPad, what the school decided to do was to put in a sum of money, for example, £100, then they asked the parents to donate the £300 over the duration of two years. We've not done any variable donation schemes yet, but they, they are out there and they are happening. So what some schools are doing, they're going to the parents and saying, look, please, we'd like you to help fund the, the rollout of the digital one, you know, one-to-one -one learning. Um, we respect everyone's circumstances are different, so can you put, pay us either, or donate either five or 10 or 20 pounds a month, depending on what the actual <coughs> parent um, wishes to do. What the key thing is, I keep coming back to this, this thing here, early parental involvement is key. And I cannot stress this enough, that it is absolutely imperative that you bring parents in to the, this, this concept of, of your digital one-to-one -one learning journey as soon as possible, especially if it's a parental donation scheme. Um, you know, and we have been to some schools which is where there's been a parents' evening, and it was like something out of the medieval ages, as parents were all you know, up in arms that they've been asked to, to pay the money or to donate, as I should say, and the reason being is it was forced upon them right at the 11th hour, and that's really just not the way to actually um, to do that. 
Okay, so um, has anyone got any idea how many iPads have been sold into the education space this year? We have Peter over there, <laughs> and we have Mr. Gibson down here. Right, okay, to give you a rough idea, and Philip, please, uh, sorry, um, Peter, please correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's roughly about 280,000 units, uh, iPads in the UK, sold into the education space. Apple don't believe specific numbers, but what they will say is there's 99 schools that have gone complete one-to-one, and there are over 20,000 schools that have purchased at least 20 iPads. Okay. And every one of those will be in between. And if we've got any maths teachers around here, if we multiply 20 by that, by that, it should hopefully come to 280,000. Now, what I've been un I understand is that by the end of this year, there'll be roughly 800,000 iPads in the education space. And the research that we've looked at says that by 2020, circa, uh, 20, sorry, circa 12 million units would have been sold to 7 million uh, in in into the, the education space, which makes up about 7 million children. Obviously, as ch children leave, they, they keep the iPad. So last year, as a business, we found ourselves, I mean, historically, our roots are leasing and asset finance. But what we found is more and more schools were looking to actually embrace this, this Apple technology. And so we started looking at the marketplace. And as a company, we worked out that there's a huge opportunity here. But the opportunity wasn't just in terms of leasing or parental donations. There's a whole host of other things that get wrapped around it. Um, so we built our parental donation system. And it works very simply. So we, will go, we have a ring fence company. The business does not trade. So, and every time we take on a new school, we set up a brand new bank account. So John Hamden has, a, has their own bank account within our company. And all the parental donations come into this company. And then the donations get paid over to, to John Hampton in this case on either a monthly or a quarterly basis. It's all full exposure, uh, a full communication and transparency. So if necessary, we can show them the bank statements. And, um, and the, the donation system will actually administer all, those, um, the, all that money coming in. It will money, administer any arrears. And we can actually handle speaking to the, um, speaking to the parents um, if necessary. With the, the system, you can also set rules. So it may be that you would like us to give us the authority to speak to some parents, but not others. So we have a, a system that actually handles that. It is a lot of work. We've been in, collect, in a business where we collect rentals for 20 plus years. And I can assure you that it actually is, is more, it's, there's quite a bit to it when it comes to actually doing that. On the back of that, we've built an asset tracking system. So we track the, the iPad, who the custodian is, the serial number. And then um, I'll talk about insurance in a few seconds time. And then from a login perspective, the school can log in and see a whole range of things. But in also the parent can log in. So the parent is going to log in to see, for example, how many donations they, they make. But in addition to that, moving on, if we look at ins the insurance and the warranty, one of the key challenges we have with insurance is that if there is a claim, you have got to make the claim within two weeks. And what we're finding is if a school is shut for the summer, potentially that, that claim could go over the two weeks and the claim is, is void. So as a business, what we try to do is we try and handle all the insurance claims ourselves and take that pressure away from the school. But insurance is a huge thing. Believe me, these, these devices get dropped, they get stolen. Um, within the first week of John Hamden's scheme going live, there was a break-in at somebody's house. It was covered on insurance. Um, and again, you go onto the internet, there's some horror stories out there, but typically um, the insurance claims aren't too bad. And also the same applies to the warranty. The, our system will actually allow you to administer all the, the warranty claims um, if there are any. Okay, um, short, sweet. Um, I think it probably brings, brings it to an end. Obviously, if you'd like to have any more conversations about how to run a parental donation scheme or how, how you could in, in put leasing into the business into your school, please have a chat afterwards. Other than that, I'd just like to say again, Andy, thank you so much indeed for uh, the invitation here. And I'll pass you back to Andy. Thank you.